In this video, we're going to highlight new features for modeling of support lines using the dynamic support line editor, and this is specific to column and middle strip generation in Adapt Builder 2020. We're going to go ahead and start from the modeling ribbon. We're going to create just a simple slab. It's going to be a four base slab. We'll do four spans in the X, four spans in the Y, and we'll use 30 foot sp uh, spacing for these, for these spans. The slab will be eight inches thick. So we have our model set up here. Now with that wizard, we also have support lines located for the column strips uh, in the frame lines in the X and the Y directions. So if I go to floor design, I can turn on those strips as shown. I'm actually going to go back and just delete the strips. I'll remove them and we're going to show a few new options located here in the dynamic editor for strip modeling. This dynamic editor has been reorganized, it's been recategorized, there's been a few tabs that have been added to this location. And for more detail on what these tabs do and what these different options do, the user can always go here to the help menu under documentation and locate the Adapt Builder 2020 new features supplement. That, that gives more detail into the new tools located in this version. So let's go back to the dynamic editor. Uh, the first thing we want to talk about are creating unique support lines for all spans, uh, this first option here. So we'll go to the X direction. And what this does, in the previous version, if I generate my construction line through a frame line and I select Enter, you can see that this is a continuous support line. So any property associated with that support line is going to be found in all spans. It's identical for all spans because it's related to the support line. If I go back and delete that and I say, well, I want to be able to associate properties with each unique span, I can come back here and I can select this option to create a unique support line for all spans. And I'll go back, generate my construction line. Let me go ahead and pause that. And now you can see I have a support line for each span. And that's just a way to break up support lines rather than have it be continuous. And I could do it for a partial frame line. For example, if I went from this point, let me go back to resume, if I go from this point to this point, enter, you can see now I have one, two, three, and four spans. And I could delete that if I didn't need that little tail on the end of a span. So this is a way just to break those up automatically. Now for this example today, we're going to go through and we're going to um, generate continuous support lines for both X and Y direction. So I'm going to just go back and select my design strips. Um, one thing I can do using the property grid is if I just window select everything and I go back and let's say I filter. So I'm going to go back here and filter. I can select or isolate the selected type and that isolates just those uh, support lines and now I can delete uh, those support lines. So let's go through and get rid of those support lines. Okay, we're going to come back into the dynamic editor. We're going to use the functions here in the dynamic editor to create our support line. So all, uh, one other new feature is the ability for the ends to be uh, located perpendicular to the slab edge. If we have this selected, the program will always create the perpendicular location. So if I take this through there and then this through here, and like so, the program will automatically align the support line on the slab edge. So this makes it nice and easy for us to generate these design strips pretty quickly um, rather than having to enter them manually here. We could always go back and use these manual options as well. I'll switch over to the Y direction. These are going to be considered our column strips. So along the frame lines we're calling this our column strips. Now in older versions of the software we had an automatic middle strip uh, option which became obsolete. It didn't um, conform or let's say it wasn't compatible with some of the new things we were doing with the support lines and splitters. So it went out for one iteration. It's now back. It's new and improved. And I'm going to show you some of the tools associated with middle strips in the program. Um, we have all of our support lines created. I'm going to close that for just a moment and I'm going to generate the sections. And in this case I'll isolate X and you can see these tributaries are based on full tributaries. In other words, 
uh, to each side of the column strip support line, I'm, I'm half the distance to the next support line. That's how the program has created these strips because it doesn't see any other type of strip. If I come back to the dynamic editor, let me go ahead and delete those. There's this other option here called create middle strip support line. I'm going to just ignore that for a moment. Um, there are ways to create middle strip support lines. I could, I could use this wizard, right? I could say, well, I'm going to create a middle strip support line from here to here. Let me go back and select it from there to there. There's a middle strip support line in this iteration of the program in builder 2020. We do not automatically delete middle strip support lines when we delete design strips. That's one difference between this and those older versions that had that option available. So this support line, one thing that's important to note is it's tagged under design strip. It's tagged as middle strip. That's very important uh, uh, designation in how the program creates the tributary for that middle strip. And we're going to talk more about that. I could manually create a, a middle strip. I could just create an X support line from here over to here. And I could go in and I could tag that as middle strip. And then I could copy that. I could say, I'm going to copy that down into other bays. So I could do a combination of manual versus automatic. It's important, again, the important thing is, is whether or not this is tagged as middle strip. And let's go back and just delete those. Now, one thing that's, that's nice in the new dynamic editor is if I jump over here to middle strip, there's uh, uh, automatic creation of middle strips. The minimum span distance is really just the span of the column strip that the program is using to formulate a middle strip. So anything greater than four feet, these are obviously all greater than four feet, we're going to create the middle strip. We can also automatically trim the middle strips if they fall short of the slab edge or extend out of the slab edge due to the way that the column strip has been formulated. We can trim them automatically using this setting. And I can create middle strips. Once I create the middle strip, you can see these are shaded or they're, they're really colored in blue when I'm inside of the editor mode. If I close that mode, they're no longer in blue. They're just the black color for the, for the strip line or the support line. If I select that, again, it's tagged automatically as middle strip. And I can generate the cuts. And now we have a nice array of column strips, middle strips. Now, in, in this case, we're going to look at one of these bays. And I'm going to use a marker tool here to kind of show what it is we want to we want to look at. So this bay is 30 feet. And we know that this column strip, the distance from here to here, and what's the distance from here to here? Well, the middle strip is just half of that 30 feet. It's 15 feet. This is seven and a half feet and seven and a half feet. That's the automatic breakup of how the program would categorize the column strips and the middle strips. The middle strip is always going to be one half the distance of this bay automatically, unless we somehow modify the percent allocation of the column strip. And we're going to show how that can be done now. If we go back to the dynamic editor, actually, let me go back and pause that and I'll just delete the strips. We have our middle strips. One nice thing is if you don't like the outcome of the middle strip, you can just delete them. I can come back and regenerate them, delete them, regenerate, and so on. Um, again, they are not automatically erased. So once they're created, you can manipulate them, modify them, delete them, add uh, support line nodes to them. You, they're basically just as if you drew them yourself as a support line. One other thing we're going to do here is we're going to go up here and we're going to look at limits. So the limits are really how the program defines how much allocated tributary goes to a support line. Coming back to middle strips, our middle strips are still there, but we're going to go here to limits for a moment. And let me pause that and show strips in both directions, and then I'll resume. And the limits really only pertain to the column strip support lines or a non-middle strip support line. In this case, they're all on column lines. And the blue color, the cyan color, is none. We have not specified a limit. So the program breaks it up automatically, as I described earlier. 50% to the column strip, the balance goes to the, or 50% to the middle strip, the balance goes to the column strip. 
There's also a nice little tool here where we can just use the font size tool to increase the font. That's that's a small feature, but it's nice to have it right in front of us there. And here, everything is set to none. Now, if I set the maximum or the percent distance between support line, I'll call this 15%. Remember earlier, we said that if we break up the support line per span, then this percentage could be done on a per span basis. But because these are continuous, it's done along the entire strip line, not on a per span basis. So what we're doing is we're, we're telling the program, apply 15% of the tributary width to each side of the column line. This is the allocated percentage. If you want to modify it per support line, I don't have to apply to all. I could say, well, I want this to be 25 and this 25, 25, and this 15. Here, I'm going to just change all of them to 15%. We have our middle strips still. I'll close that, and I'm going to generate the cuts again. Okay, and there there is a small little issue here that's being corrected um, where this, this gap should actually be filled by the middle strip. So ignore that, ignore that gap here, 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 and so on. What we want to focus on is the distance that we're filling in for the tributaries. So the distance from here to here is 15% of this length, which is going to be 4.5 feet. This distance from here to here is 4.5, this is 4.5, and this middle strip basically fills in the balance. And the reason it fills in the balance is because it is labeled as middle strip. So if it was not labeled as middle strip, the program would just lock it at its 15 foot length versus 18 feet, which is the 30 feet minus four and a half feet on both sides, that's the 21 feet. Um, and so we, we have this leftover um, strip width of 18, 19 feet. I think it's, in this case, it would be, actually, I'm sorry, it's 20, 21 feet because this is a 30-foot bay. So this is how the program uh, assigns these tributaries. And we could confirm that if we were to go and measure this. I'll turn on some snap tools here to, to make this easy to, for us to measure. But if I, if I measure this, this is 4.5 feet. If I measure, for example, uh, this one here, let's go back and remeasure. This is going to be four and a half feet. Okay, so that's four and a half. And then I'll measure from here over to here. Let me clear that again and reset it. I'll measure just from here up to there, and that's around 21 feet. And that would be the middle strip. So if I take this strip here and I say, well, that, that's not going to be a middle strip. It's not tagged as a middle strip, and I regenerate my design cuts, we can see the program locks us in to half this bay distance. This is only 15 feet. This is this is now about 2.09 feet and 2.09 feet. And the reason for that is that the program is saying, well, now because this is no longer labeled a middle strip, this is just a strip, take 15% uh, of the distance from here to here. And so that's 2.09 feet there and 2.09 feet there. So the middle strip tag matters when you're generating the design strips, um, and you you want that truly to be classified as a middle strip. Let's go back and reclassify that. I'll just select it, use the property grid. One little nuanced thing here is historically adapt has required double click or check box. Uh, there's a check mark in a lot of the dialogues to select and save the setting. In the property grid, that's not true. In the property grid, if you select something and change it, it automatically changes based on the first selection. So if I if I select that checkbox, it's done. If I change this to three, I don't have to go and, and select a check mark, um, which is nice. It saves the user a little bit of time if that accumulates, you know, checking those check marks multiple times in uh, your use instance of the program. Coming back over to the support line dynamic editor. So we talked about um, the limits. Now the only other, other limit option is this option for for max per side. So I'm going to say max per side is going to be three feet. So we have a three foot max per side. There are middle strips. So I'll close that and I'm going to generate again. And when I generate this again, we have a different outcome. Okay, and that, that outcome 
is again this distance from the support line on the column strips was which was set to three foot max per side this is limited to three feet so because this is a middle strip tag the middle strip it doesn't matter what the dimension is from here down it will always fill in the gap between the two boundaries of the column strips if it's tagged as middle strip that's the key so here we have a three three foot distance three foot distance again this is more of a global setting now because I applied it to all support lines and all support lines are continuous and you can actually see this gap out here that gap is there because we said this is only three feet from here up to there and that's the outcome of this type of a um, scenario let's go back here to the support line dynamic editor and we're going to talk about two more things uh, one is going to be the criteria this really just allows the user to tag the type of criteria you're going to design for so two-way slab one-way slab or beam again we can apply to all support lines or we can apply it to a individually clicked support line so this might be let's say one-way slab and one-way slab I could I could also um, window select so if I window select through several those all change to one-way slab it also has a font size uh, setting here to reduce or increase the font size and then finally if we go to the trim option this is just a trim extend tolerance for support lines something that's similar to the trim and extend for tendon modeling in our PT mode uh, this allows us to trim and extend support lines that might be outside of that of that tolerance and if this was if this support line for example was drugged back slightly and we take that and we we set our trim and extend tolerance we go back and resume and I select this you select that endpoint and that thing gets trimmed back to the slab edge. So these are new features available in the dynamic support line editor. If you have any questions about these new features, please contact us at adaptsupport at